Hello and welcome to Fraculous, you lovely lot. We're here to bring you the best of all things apps, from the stuff you can't live without to the latest handset news. It's going to be absolutely fabulous. Yes? Absolutely? No? Whilst in future weeks we'll be covering everything from Blackberries to Androids, you can't have failed to notice that it's been the iPhone 4 that's been making a splash in recent weeks. And so this week is dedicated to all things Superphone. And as if that's not enough, we will be giving you the chance to win one of your very own at the end of the show. Apple introduced a veritable glut of new features in the new iPhone 4, but one that's really got people hot under the collar has been the HD video capabilities. Combine that with the brand new iMovie app and you're just one blockbusting smash away from your very own Oscar. But is it all we were promised and more? My own experience with iMovie has been a decidedly non-Apple one. Whilst Apple normally prides itself on the intuitive nature of their products, to the point where you'll probably never see anything as obvious as an actual instruction manual, I had to do quite a bit of research to get iMovie doing everything it promised. Luckily, Apple hasn't been as daft as to completely deny us instructions, and in fact, if you go to this URL, you'll find a full breakdown as to the functions. Once you've captured the footage you want to use, you can add media to the timeline, such as photos and audio, and the audio you choose from your library of songs. But, of course, you would never upload music to YouTube that you don't own the rights to. Now, would you? There's also the option to add a theme, which gives you some slightly naff transitions, as well as the chance to add text. Weirdly, though, there's no way of adding a title to a photo, so if you want opening titles, you have to start the movie with a video. After you've exported it, it gets stored in the camera roll, so you have to go and track it down there in order to share it. You can email or MMS it, send it to your mobile me account, or upload it straight to YouTube. Obviously, it does depend on your connection, but this 20 second video clip took about a minute and a half to upload via Wi-Fi. Having dug out some instructions, I then did find the app pretty easy to use, but definitely not on Apple's normal, OMG, this is so simple scale. It's perhaps a message that will become a bit of a theme, as their phones become more powerful and ever so slightly more complicated. However, for the £2.99 slash $4.99 price tag, and can I just point out at this stage that for once the UK doesn't lose out in the exchange rate maths game, it's essential if you're going to take advantage of the iPhone 4's movie potential. So, buy it. Immediately. Hello and welcome to the News Cubes, where each week we will be pontificating over the good, the bad and the newsworthy. So, Will? Hi. What are we kicking things off with? Obviously, the one thing you can't get away from, iPhone 4. Looks brilliant, looks great. Antenna, potential issue there. Don't care, right-handed. But Apple's come out, they've got a statement about this, mm. and they've said, it's not necessarily an antenna problem. It's the way that the antenna is being reported by the signal bars. Initially, it does look like a little bit of an excuse, but reading into it, it looks like they might have a point here. OK. I don't understand. Explain to me more. I can explain this to you, but I will need the help of a monkey, a banana, and evil Knievel. <laughs> to the set of area <laughs> where you explain that stuff. So this banana, this represents no signal at all. Yep. Evil Knievel, on the other hand, he represents sitting on top of a transmitting tower. So between those scales, you have no signal over here, you have full signal. Okay. And your five bars should be one, two, three, four, five. What Apple is saying is that instead of being one to five, what this monkey represents is five. So they've got one, two, three, four, five. Anything above here... As he is indicating. As he is indicating. <laughs> Is full signal. I see. So if your signal is here and you clench the iPhone and it goes down to here, you won't see that. You'll see nothing. Right. Alternatively, if you're already in mid coverage and you clench the iPhone here, you'll go five, four, three, two. It looks like a massive gap drop, but it's not a drop from full signal to banana. So Apple have made the mistake of putting their monkey in the wrong place. Yes. So what they need to do is they need their monkey to be up here with Evil Knievel. Evil Knievel hates that. He does because he's out of a job. The monkey's yeah. taking his job. Have you told Steve? I haven't told Steve, but I'm going to email him and hopefully next keynote you'll see this. Hi, Steve. So that's how it works. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Excellent explanation.
Each week, we'll be answering a viewer query. But since you are the first people with eyes to see this, with it being the first week, I have made up a viewer and his question in my head. His name is Clive, and he enjoys reruns of Dawson's Creek, although he can't help but feel that Dawson was a bit of a shit in the later series of the show. His question is this. Help me! I don't know which tariff to choose. All I know is that I really, really, really want an iPhone 4. Well, Clive, myself and my co-presenter, Will, have slightly differing views on this, as I am not afraid of commitment, and he's a boy. But my advice would be for you to settle down and get yourself a contract. Personally, I'm firmly of the belief that every little helps, which is why I'd recommend picking up a 16 gig iPhone from Tesco when you do your weekly shop. As long as you're willing to stump up the £329 up front, you can get the £25 per month contract, which gets you 250 minutes, unlimited text, as well as one gig of data. The best bit of this, though, is that it's a 12-month contract. Whilst I'm not a commitment phobe, I don't want to be stuck with an outdated phone because I've had to sign a two-year contract. So, my advice, get yourself to Tesco. Yes, it's true. The iPhone 4 is the first iPhone you can get on a 12-month contract. But even that's far too long. That's like 7 billion technology years. For instance, there's no 64 gig version yet. 32 gig may seem like a lot now, but once you start shooting HD video, you're soon going to fill that up. I reckon there's going to be a 64 gig version out around Christmas. If you're SIM free, you can stick your old one up on eBay and upgrade straight away. Finally, you can have any tariff you like. If you're happy with your own tariff, you don't need to move up to another special iPhone tariff. If you're handy with the scissors, just cut down your SIM, stick it in your phone, and away you go. So, you've got your shiny new phone, now what? Will and I both have apps we can't live without, and we're going to pit our convincing tactics against each other to decide which of us is actually the best person, officially. So, have a listen, and then let us know in the comments which you're most convinced by, or any alternative can't live without apps you've got. Who knows, maybe we'll check them out in future shows. Spotify is my ultimate iPhone 4 app. Instead of buying music, you can rent it, so you don't have to pay for tracks individually. Just pay one monthly fee of £10 a month and listen to as much music as you like and download it onto your handset so you can listen to it where you haven't got Wi-Fi coverage. However, unless you're one of those jailbreaker types, previously you couldn't run Spotify in the background. Hit the home button, check your email, the music stops dead. Now, with iOS 4's new backgrounding features, it behaves just like Apple's native iPod app. And for me, that makes it the future of music. My top tip is Camera Plus. Now the iPhone has a decent camera, in fact it has two decent cameras, and they launch within seconds of you trying to open the application, while for minutes, I am all over the photography. Particularly since I've become mildly obsessed with populating those folders, I'm not even sure I'm that keen on. Anyway, Camera Plus allows you to apply all sorts of effects to your photos, either taken within the app or grabbed from the camera roll. It's much like the insanely popular Hipstamatic, but has one key advantage for me. When you select your photo to an apply an effect, you can see little thumbnails of each effect at the same time. What it lacks in the retro appeal of Hipstamatic, it makes up for in usability. Whether it's emo colour effects or the application of backlit lighting, you can have hours of completely self-indulgent fun tweaking your photos. It's the next generation of MySpace photos, trust me. We had a plan for today's episode, and it involved a dog. But the internet is currently ablaze with talk of a new app, and so we dropped everything, literally, so that we could bring you this review whilst it's hot. Because we know you only care about the hotness. Please welcome Flipboard. Available only on the iPad, this bills itself as a personalised social magazine. Depending on who you follow on Twitter and Facebook, your magazine could look like a mashup of Smash Hits and The Economist, or maybe Vogue and Viz, or perhaps it would be Nylon and The Lady. So, just how great is it? It's pretty great. Oh God, it's so freaking great. More specifically, you see the recent contributors at the bottom? That's a real-time feed of what people on Facebook, my Twitter friends, and also general internet people are putting on the web right now. Open the Flipboard with a page flip, obviously, and you can see the various modules here. 
The most interesting ones are these two. I've logged in via my Facebook and Twitter accounts, and so when I open each of them, I get a feed of what my friends are talking about. And I'll see the good stuff first, since it uses fancy algorithms to work out what's most popular. If I hit on one of these, it opens the article within the app. And with longer articles, you just hit read on web. The cool thing is that you can see who's retweeted the article, retweet links yourself, and even follow people all from within the interface. So that's your personalized pages. These modules here are customizable. Flipboard has created its own channels, taking links from various influencers, as well as partnering with some publishers who have their own feeds. So I could add Boing Boing, the TED Talks, or just go for Flipboard fame to get a smattering of news from a load of different people. And so just how much do you think Flipboard costs? Wrong, it's nothing. It's completely free for the moment. It is stuff like this that makes me remember how much I bloody love technology. Mwah. So that's it. If you think we're great, you can subscribe on YouTube, iTunes or RSS, as well as hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And of course, we'd love to hear all of your brains. Email us at yo at fraculus.com, leave a comment or do some of that newfangled atting all the kids are engaging in. Are you still here? Is it because you heard we were giving away a 32 gig iPhone 4? A SIM free iPhone 4 at that? That is indeed an actual fact and we've made it about as easy as something's possible to be. Just become a fan on Facebook or follow us on Twitter and we'll pick one lucky winner who will receive that iPhone 4. So get yourself to facebook.com forward slash fraculus, follow us on twitter.com forward slash fraculus and maybe check out fraculus.com for the terms and conditions. I have all my fingers crossed for you.